This week on The Travel Show. So we're going to be diving on an archaeological yeah, site. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Underwater. Exactly. We're swimming back to the Bronze Age in Macedonia. Oh, wow. You see all walks of life coming in to get a tattoo, you know, the bankers, lawyers, doctors. We're making a lasting mark in Singapore. It's art and it's beautiful art at that. We're taking someone else's seat in first class. If someone finds me in an airport and they say, hey, catch me if you can, yes, I will switch seats with you. You can take my first or business class seat and I'll go back to wherever you're sitting. I'm a prayer dish that could have been had in the Tudor times. And we're taking a bite out of one of King Henry VIII's favorite treats. First this week, we're visiting a small country with a big history and sites dating all the way back to the Bronze Age. Now people there are hoping that ancient past will pull in today's tourists. We sent Amanda Ruggeri to Lake Orhid in Macedonia to find out more. This mostly rural country has drawn people and empires for thousands of years. The ancient Persians conquered this area, so did Alexander the Great. So I arrived into Macedonia late last night. It's this landlocked little country in the Balkans, so I drove three and a half hours through mountains and forest. It was lush, it was absolutely beautiful, but I didn't see a single body of water until I drove over a hill and found myself here at Lake Ohrid, one of the most beautiful lakes I think I've ever seen. This is the oldest lake in Europe. The area around it is old too. Even the town of Ohrid already was a town at the time the father of Alexander the Great was king in the fourth century BC. That ancient history is one of the main reasons visitors love to come here. Most of the tourists want to experience the ancient thing, to see the culture in here. What about as a local, as a Macedonian, what does the history here mean to you? The history, I'm actually, I love the history, and at the same time, I'm, I'm feeling so proud about my history. I've got a sense of this lake's extraordinary history from its surface. Hello. Hello. You're fine? Hi. My name is Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. A bit of diving today? Yeah, All please. All right, come on. But to really go in search of Ohrid's ancient roots, I have to get a little wet. You ready? Yeah, come on. ready. Follow me. So we're going to be diving on an archaeological site. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Underwater. Exactly, exactly underwater. So it's not just your normal, typical, everyday dive. It's like something more on top of that, including a lot of interesting artifacts and mm. objects which are more than 3,000 years old. We don't have to go far to find traces of Ohrid's ancient history underwater. With the water so still and clear, diving here is so relaxing that I almost swim right by without even noticing the first artifacts. Jovan has to point them out to me. But when I look, I see they look like the stumps of trees. These are wooden pylons that, in a stroke of Bronze Age ingenuity, once held up houses built on a platform over the water. In fact, archaeologists have found more than 6,000 remains of these wooden piles in the lake. Jovan also points out some other objects, but it's obvious that they aren't just the normal debris you'd expect to see at a lake bottom. 
this artifact is probably something used for mm. to drink from all right so as you can see there is a really small handle right here ergonomically made all right so judging by this if you can see can i hold it yeah please yeah do. please do careful oh wow all right so it's still fresh as you can see yeah some uh shells around it yep all right still wet from our dive yeah. that's the most perfect little handle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting to see how they used to yeah. do these things so you think this would have been like a, a cup probably. to drink out but of most or... probably yes yes so wow uh, and the last one is the stone axe all right so this is the the front part you put the stick there or the, the wooden stick with the handle and from the behind you have uh, the part we've, we've seen underwater. As fascinating as it is to discover, and even touch, artifacts from Ohrid's ancient past, it's still difficult to picture what life would have been like here some 3,000 years ago. That's where this reconstructed Bronze Age settlement comes in. Called the Bay of the Bones, the settlement has 24 houses built on a wooden platform over the lake. Lake Ohrid and the area are considered so special, they even have been listed as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. And Ohrid has another big draw for visitors from around the world, too. The annual Ohrid Summer Festival has hosted musicians, actors, and singers from more than 60 different countries. Our concerts are full, and this year we have more than 350 artists playing and acting here. We have like 33 concerts, two ballet performances, uh, nine drama shows. The venues used for the Ohrid Summer Festival are all historic sites. That includes this ancient Roman amphitheater. We have this marvelous stage also in the antique theater made 2,000 years before our era. And is there something really special about performing in an amphitheater like this or in an 11th century church? Well, I church? think it is because this amphitheater looks quite spectacular in the night with 3,000 uh, visitors here. So every musician is very excited performing. So, yes. And the acoustic of St. Sophia is really spectacular. I'm sure that you would come for some concert and you will you'll have the opportunity to, to listen. Possibly dating all the way back to the 9th century, Ohrid's Church of St. Sophia is one of the most important buildings in all of Macedonia. Today, its interior is covered with glorious Byzantine frescoes, painted between the 11th and 13th centuries. Well, I think that Ohrid is an excellent mix between the, the ancient history, the culture, and the, and the program we do as a festival, and also the, the culinary and the restaurants, and the good food, and the good nightlife. I think that everything is important to have a good, good offer for the tourists. On a night like this, when a pianist is performing here for the festival, the combination of Ohrid's history, art, and music is intoxicating. It's easy to see why locals are hopeful that more and more visitors will fall in love with this area and its history. Next on The Travel Show, let's take another trip back in time to get a taste of a dish made for one of the most notorious of kings. My name is Andrew Chan. I'm the head chef at Thornbury Castle in South Gloucestershire. <laughs> Thornbury Castle is famous for Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. Um, they came here for the honeymoon. Today I'll be trying to replicate a dish that they would have eaten at uh, that time. I'm going to prepare a dish that could have been had in a Tudor time. So my dish is going to be South Gloucestershire pork, cheek with black pudding bonbon, some vegetables and sage. So this is cross pork. So you have the pork cheek. So the only meat we're going to take out initially is the cheek. What I'm going to do now is going to season them up, get them into the pan, get some nice caramelization on it. It 
in due times they're, they're kind of like homey food, so it's very Moorish. So they've grown their potatoes, their carrots, their swedes, their parsnips. To get natural sweetness out, out of vegetables, you get your red wine, of course red wine in. Just plainly stock. Just going to pour it, just so it covers the whole dish. Leave it there, so for like two hours, give or take. I made a bonbon, so you have your flour, your eggs, and your breadcrumbs. Uh, we have a mix, so I'm going to make the mix now for you, so I'm going to show you the black pudding. Put into a mixing bowl. So from the pork stock, that you pour, cut your pork cheek. So we, we keep the sauce, that's all left over. Reduce it down so it comes like kind of sauce consistency. Just pour a tiny amount in. Just mix it up into a paste, so it's easy enough to uh, roll into balls. Just put them in gently. And all you want to do is cook these for about a minute, just to so get a nice golden color on them. Bit of apple sauce, pickled vegetables, black and pom pom. South cross your pork cheek, and you finish off with a nice little bit of crisp sage and a pork broth. Still to come here on this week's travel show. We're taking someone else's seat in first class. If someone finds me in an airport and they say, hey, catch me if you can. Yes, I will switch seats with you. You can take my first or business class seat and I'll go back to wherever you're sitting. And we're bearing almost all in the name of body art. A good tattoo artwork, you are not only going to attract more people looking at you, it will also help the wearer to have a better self-confidence. So don't go away. The Travel Show, your essential guide wherever you're heading. Time now for Trending Travel, your monthly mashup of the best travel related stories, snaps, and videos online. First class flying is a luxury few of us can afford. But if you see this man at the airport, you could be in for a free upgrade. His name is Gilbert Ott and he's a travel blogger, offering money-saving tips on air travel. He's claimed he will trade his first class or business class seat to anyone who spots him before a flight. If someone finds me in an airport, maybe at the check-in, the security lane, uh, you know, duty-free, getting some food, or even the boarding gate, and they say, hey, uh, catch me if you can, that guy, you're that guy, Gilbert. Yes, I will switch seats with you. You can take my first or business class seat and I'll go back to wherever you're sitting. The key here is that they find me before I get on the plane because once I'm on the plane, that seat is mine. You can keep up to date with Gilbert's Twitter feed where he'll post hints on where you're likely to catch him around the world. The next generation of lunar robots explored a more earthbound location last month. Researchers traveled to Mount Etna Europe's most active volcano to test the machines for Project Robex, that's Robotic Exploration of Extreme Environments. Etna's rocky terrain is similar to the moon's, and like the moon, it's also prone to earthquakes. It's hoped the robots will monitor these lunar quakes and answer questions about the moon's core. Closer to home, robots are also helping out passengers at Charles de Gaulle Airport where a robot valet called Stan parks your car after you've dropped it off. It then monitors your flight on the way back and has your car ready for you on your return. If the prototype is a success, Stan's makers claim this automated procedure will also maximize space in overcrowded car parks. And if you're struggling to find your next holiday destination, you might want to leave it to the team at Surprise Me. This Dutch company has recently launched in the UK and for a fee, they claim they'll book you a mystery break with the destination kept secret until you reach the airport. Faced with a choice between city break and backpacking adventure, you're given only the barest idea of what to pack for. And of course, there's always the risk you could end up going to somewhere you've been before. Thanks to everyone who sent us their pictures this month using the hashtag TravelTuesday. Here are some of my favorites. 
Carl Hammett visited Norfolk in the UK when he took this photo of a beautifully lit woodland trail. And Carla snapped this sunset image of the Disney Springs in Orlando, Florida. Don't forget to check out our Twitter and Facebook feeds for loads of extra special travel show content. Now let's look at the travel videos clocking up the views online. One country that's seen record-breaking numbers of tourists in the last year is Morocco, with over 10 million visitors in 2016. So we've selected a couple of films that show the country at its best that you can also check out online. The film Morocco was not a preconceived plan. It uh, was just the result of a month-long travel across the country that my wife and I did for our travel blog. But this film was made just using one camera, the absolute minimum. I find people to be less intimidated. When you come in with a crew and large production, it just changes the environment. Although the film shows you some beautiful imagery, it's really nothing compared to experiencing it for yourself. Don't forget to get in touch. It's at BBC Travel Show. A couple of years ago on The Travel Show, I got a preview of the massive new National Art Gallery here in Singapore. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a work by Radin Saleh, a Javanese artist who was born to an aristocratic family. It's very visceral in a sense with that tiger scowling at us. Well now we're taking a look at a very different kind of Singapore art. You know, it's rare that, that a lot of our local tattoo community comes together and congregate in one area, in one spot. I mean, these are very talented individuals. And, you know, it's art. It's art and it's beautiful art at that. I guess I'm one of the most, like, uh, well-known tattooers in the world. Uh, I've been traveling for about 10 years now, um, tattooing just everybody that I can. It's so intimate. Tattooing is really intimate because you're dealing with the, with touching people and just the interaction of human beings, and it's one on one for so long. Um, it's just an intimate thing. It's overwhelming getting a lot of attention. You know what I mean? Uh, it's hard to focus. You know, because I just want to create good art. I'm super grateful, but uh, it's hard. You know. What I've noticed about Singapore in general, it's not very heavily tattooed. Like walking around the streets, I didn't see a lot of tattoos on like, you know, lower limbs where you can see it or necks or faces and stuff. So that was really interesting because everywhere I go, everybody's heavily tattooed. This is a very significant event for the tattoo community, especially in Singapore. Uh, we've come out from an era back in the day where tattoos might have had a little bit of a negative connotation. There are still a few barriers, you know, and walls, and the stigma is still kind of there. So doing an event like this is really trying to just remove all that. The people in Singapore see it tattooing with a uh more negativity, you know, being with triads and, and, and mostly bad stuff. But now that we're opening up, you see like all walks of life coming in to get a tattoo, you know, the bankers, lawyers, doctors, you know, people are opening up to it quite a lot more and I think, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, category four. $50. Yeah. We are looking for the quality of work. The points are given in uh, each individual details. For example, for colors, we make sure that it's bright, solid, and the blend is smooth. For black and gray, of course, we are looking at the design, the depth, the detail. 
individual creation of, from the artist. To me, every single tattoo design is a partnership between the client and the artist. That should be the way that we are looking at it. A good tattoo artwork on an individual body, you are not only going to attract more people looking at you, it will also help the wearer to have a better self-confidence. Unfortunately, I have never been satisfied for the things I've done. As long as my client like it, they are happy about it, for many years, it's fine with me. The greatest part about going to conventions is that I'm able to drop tattoos off all over the world, and my name and my piece of myself, my soul, and it lives there until the person passes, you know? And that's it for this week's travel show, but coming up next week. Carmen begins a culinary journey through Japan, mm. tackling the flavors that locals love, mm. oh. but visitors Woo. might find a bit of a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> ah. mm. A bit like an oyster, really salty, but the consistency is, oh. Join us next week for that if you can, but if you can't wait until then, then sign up to our social media feeds. All the details are on your screen now. But from me, Henry Golding, and the rest of the Travel Show team here in Singapore, it's goodbye.